Today we'll be learning how to create this particular loop. It's sciency and we'll be using geometry nodes. There's going to be a lot of tips and tricks in between. So hopefully every bit of the video will be informative for you. With that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree after which we'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we'll press shift A and search for a circle and we'll just choose the mesh circle or the curve circle. It doesn't make too much of a difference. But by choosing the mesh circle, we can reduce the number of vertices down to three so that we just get three points. Now we can increase the radius as well. Maybe we'll go with a radius of three. And now on each of these points, we want to instance a UV sphere. So I'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node. Plug that in after the mesh circle. And for the instance, let's press shift A and search for an icosphere. Now this icosphere mesh can go into the instance, but we're going to require far more subdivisions. So let's increase the number of subdivisions to something like three. And then we need them to be shaded smooth. So I'll press shift A and search for a set shade smooth node. If I plug this in after the icosphere, this is what we have. Now we need one more icosphere present in the center. So instead of using another mesh circle, I'll press shift A and search for a points node. Now this creates one single point right at the center. So I can simply instance this icosphere onto that point as well. So let's select the instance on points node and press shift D to duplicate it and then take this geometry output and plug it into the instance and plug this points into the points of the instance on points. Now we have to actually join these two geometries together. So I press shift A and search for a join geometry and then plug that in right here and connect these two up. If you have Node Wrangler, you can simply Alt right click to join them together. Now, if you want the distance between these to be greater, all you have to do is increase the radius on the mesh circle that you created. And that way you get even more distance and hence larger molecules. I'll maybe keep it at a distance of four for now, but I might change that just before rendering. The next thing that we need are the actual links between these. So again, I'll shift this to the side and I'll use a very similar technique to what we just did. I'll search for three points so that I can instance three cylinders onto them. I'll press shift A and search for a points node. And then I'll simply increase the count from one to three. And then on these points, I want to instance the cylinder. So I'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug the geometry into the points. Now, instead of instancing just a cylinder, the way I'm going to create the cylinder is by actually searching for a curve line. Now I can actually place the curve line however I want without having to rotate the geometry. So I find this to be much more useful than using a cylinder. So if I directly connect the curve line to the instance, we don't see anything because this is not connected to our main node tree. Let's connect that by just searching for another join geometry node or selecting this and pressing shift D to duplicate it and plugging that in over here. Now we could directly connect this into the first join geometry without using this separate node, but we will be needing this output later on. So I'm going to use it as a separate node for purposes that you'll see later on. Now, if you actually take a look at it, we don't see any curve line, but if we were to increase this Z value, we'll start seeing the curve line, but I don't want it to be on the Z value. I want it to go on the X value. I'll change this back to zero and I'll increase the X value until we get it pointed towards this particular sphere. So I'll change this X value to two and that might look like it's not reaching this sphere. But remember these spheres by themselves have a radius of one meter and I don't want this line to start from the origin. I want it to start from this tip. So if I now go to the curve line node and start changing the X start location, I can bring this out to a value of one meter and I can now change the end value till it perfectly matches up. So an end value of three will bring it to the exact start of this particular sphere. Now to actually give it some thickness, I'll press shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. And for the actual profile, curve, I can press shift A and search for a curve circle. Now I don't need the resolution to be this high, but I'll leave it as is for now. And I'll reduce the radius to maybe 0.5 and then plug the curve into the profile curve. Now this seems to be a little too fat. So I'll reduce the radius even more, make it 0.5. 25 and that seems like a good thickness but we need this to be rotated about the z-axis onto these three spheres as well remember since we have three points there are actually three cylinders present right here and the easiest way to actually fix that is by using a rotate instances node so we can press shift a and search for a rotate instances node plug that in after the curve to mesh and for the actual rotation we need to rotate only the z value so i press shift a and search for a combined xyz node and now if we were to use something and plug it into the rotation, it's no longer going to be in degrees, but it's going to be in radians. So I need to search for a math node and change this from add to two radians. And now I can press shift A and search for an index node and then simply multiply this index by 120 degrees for each of these circles. So press shift A, search for another math node. Instead of add, I'll change it to multiply and I'll multiply the index by 120 degrees and then convert that to radians and then plug this value into the Z value and now take this vector and plug it into 
to the rotation of rotate instances node. So now you can see we get all three in the correct position. If you don't want to use a two radians node instead of multiplying it by 120 degrees, you could have multiplied it by two pi by three. But since 120 is a whole round number, I preferred using the two radians node. Now that we have this, if you actually look at it really close up, they're not connected and they're not a single mesh. So to convert them into a single mesh, we can press shift A and search for a realize instances node, plug that in right here, and then press shift A and search for a merge by distance. Now we can plug that in here, but they're still not going to be connected. So we have to start increasing the distance until they get merged just like that. So once they're merged nicely, you have to make sure that even these other edges are also merged. You can then press shift A and search for a subdivision surface node. When you plug this in, you can crank up the levels and that'll just make it a nice smooth connection rather than a harsh seam. And if you feel like it's still a bit too harsh, what you can do is on this original instance on points where you instance the curve line up here, you can go ahead and press shift A and search for a resample curve node. Why we're doing this is if you actually look at the wireframe view, there are very few curves present along the cylinders and those only exist because of our subdivision surface node. So by using this resample curve node here, we get many more lines and it gets subdivided in a completely different way now. So make your count down to something low and start increasing the count until you get something that looks good but isn't ruining the mesh again. So at a count of 10, the mesh does get ruined. But if you continue on further, it does get fixed again, but that's also adding in unnecessary geometry. So you have to play around with this till you get something that works for you. For now, I'm gonna keep it at nine. Now there are other methods by which you could do this, such as converting it to a volume and then converting it back to a mesh, or you could use a mesh Boolean on these operations instead of a joint geometry node over here. But personally, this works good enough and it also renders pretty fast. So I'll keep it like this itself. If you want to see how long each operation is taking, you can actually expand this and switch on timings. And that way you see how long each frame is taking to calculate. Now that we have these, I want to go ahead and give it its material. So I'll just shift this over to the side, press shift A and search for a set material node. Then I can plug that in here. And for the actual material, I'll go to the material properties. We have the default material because this is the default cube and I'll rename this to molecule. Now in the set material, I'll go ahead and choose molecule and then move on to the next portion, which is adding in some glass spheres around each of these atoms. So I'll press shift A and search for another joint geometry. And now we're going to use this joint geometry because the output of this joint geometry that we have contains all four of these spheres. So I'll press shift A and search for a scale instances node and then take this geometry, plug it into the instance and then scale them up by something like 1.4. And now we can plug this into the joint geometry. However, just like before, we have to set the material. So let's select the set material, press shift D to duplicate it, plug it in after the scale instances. And now we can come to the material properties, press this plus button to add in a new material slot, press this new button to add in a new material and call this glass and just choose glass in the material slot over here. Now that we have this created, we're going to actually use this as an instance so that we can have a bunch of them present in a large area. So I'll press shift A and search for a grid, which is essentially a plane. And now I'll just plug this plane into the group output. I'll scale it up till we get the size that I want. So maybe a five by five grid will be big enough. And then I'll press shift a and search for a distribute points on faces node. Now this is going to create way too many points. So I'll reduce the density down to something like two or three. And I'll also change this from random to poison disc. That way I can actually play around with the distance min so that there aren't too many points present really close to each other. So I'll keep that at a distance min of 0.5 and then I'll press shift a and search for a set position node. Using the set position node, I can shift them up and down on the Z axis. So I'll have to press shift a and search for a combined X, Y, Z node so that I have individual access over the X, Y and Z. And then for the actual Z value, I'll press shift A and search for a random value node. I'll change the min to something like minus two and I'll change the max to something like plus two and then plug this value into the Z. Now we have a nice distribution of points within the volume, but I have to now instance each of these molecules onto each of these points. So to do that, I'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node. And I can simply plug this geometry into the instance. But if I do that, the size is going to be way too large. So I'm going to have to reduce the scale down to something like 0.1 and that way we have a much more manageable scale, but I think it has to be even smaller. But to create variation, instead of just changing it over there, I'll press shift A and search for a random value node. Now I'll change the min to 0.02 and I'll change the max to maybe 0.07. And now I'll plug this value into the scale so that we get random 
optimized scales that are pretty small. But right now they're all oriented in the exact same direction. So to change the actual orientation, we can play around with this rotation socket over here and just give it a random orientation on all three of the axes. So I'll shift these to the side and then duplicate this random value node. But I'm going to change it from float to vector so that we can have randomization on all three of the different axes. So the min I'm going to change to minus pi, which is minus 180 degrees. And for the max, I'll make it plus pi by just typing in pi. That way we get rotation on all three of the axes around all possible values. If we plug it in, we can see how random each of the rotations are. Now to actually create an animation of the rotations, we can press shift A and search for a rotate instances node, plug that in after the instance on points. And for the actual rotation, I'll press shift a and search for a value node and I'll also search for a combine XYZ. So then I'll plug the value into any two of the sockets but not all three. So I'll plug it into maybe the X and the Z but again the same issue occurs. We have control over the degrees but we want it to be radians so we could add in another math node and convert it to radians before doing this but because we're just using pi and not 2 pi by 3 or something like that. We can directly type in pi, so I won't be doing that. Now I'll plug this into the rotation and I'll set all of my animation defaults by going to my output properties, changing the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to keep at 300 so that it's a 10 second long loop. Output folder can be wherever it wants to be. File format is FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 and output quality, I'm going to keep as perceptually lossless. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame 0 and I'll hover over the value and tap I. And then on frame 300, I'm going to change the value to 2 star pi which is 360 degrees then I'll hover over it and tap I and you shouldn't see any change between the orientation of the molecules between 300 and 0. However if you go to any arbitrary frame in the middle it should be rotating but right now the interpolation is set to Bezier by default which means it's gonna start slow speed up in the middle and then slow down again. I don't want that so I'll press T and change it to linear so that we get a smooth loop throughout the animation. Now we can go ahead and just place our camera by selecting the camera pressing alt G to clear location alt R to clear rotation and then pressing RX 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press zero to go into my camera view and press GY to just move it back till we're at a good distribution. Now I would like it if one molecule is present in the center. So I'll just tap N to open the side panel. Then I'll go to view and I'll choose lock camera to view. So that way if I press N and just move my camera around, I can move it to whatever angle I want as I would normally move things around in my 3D viewport. So maybe I'll just make this particular molecule as my central object. Object. So I'll just place it till it's approximately in the middle of my camera. If I want to make sure that it's in the middle of my camera, I can select the camera, go to the object data properties, which is the camera properties, and then go to my viewport display, increase passport out all the way to one, and then expand composition guide and choose center. So that way you'll get a guide through the center and you can just make sure that the molecule is present perfectly at the junction of the horizontal and vertical lines. Now you can start off with the actual materials. So I'll go to my material window by changing this from the geometry editor to the shader editor and then I'll just select my geometry node object to get the materials. I can go to the material properties over here, but to see any changes that I make over here, I have to change my viewport shading from solid to rendered. Then since I'm starting off with the glass material, I'll go ahead and change this from a principled BSDF to a glass BSDF and I'll just decrease the IOR from 1.45 to 0.9. Now in reality, glass would not have an index of refraction lesser than one, but since this isn't realistic, I think artistically this looks much better than having realistic values. But to actually be able to see through through the glass material, I'll have to change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Then I'll switch off show backface and I'll check screen space refractions. But to actually get screen space refractions to work, in my render properties, I have to switch on screen space reflections. And while I'm at it, I'll switch on bloom. But under screen space reflections, I'll have to check screen space refraction as well. And now you'll be able to see within the sphere, the other spheres that were present. So if I zoom in, you can see how we're able to see through the glass. Now for the other material, I'll go ahead and select molecule and I'll actually just make it completely metallic. And I'll reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.3. For the color, I'll make it this nice yellowish color. So something like that looks pretty good. Now I need to play around with the background. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane. And I'll just scale it up by something really large, maybe 100. And now I need it to be oriented to my camera. So I'll go to the constraint properties, choose add object constraint, and then just choose copy rotation. For the target, I'll just select my camera and now it'll be oriented with my camera. But that also covers up half the molecules. So I'll press G, Z twice to move it 
on the local Z axis and just push it back till all my molecules are visible again. And then I'll add in a new material over here by pressing that button and I'll give it a base color of this bluish look. Along with that, I'll also make it completely metallic and then I'll just select my light and press G X to just bring it over to maybe this sort of a look. And then I'll go to the actual light properties and just increase the radius by a little bit. So once I'm happy with all of that, you can always go to the render properties and then change the color management to suit your needs and fine tune it to the look that you're going for by playing around with the exposure, the gamma, the look, including the view transform. But once you get exactly what you want, you can go ahead and press render animation. Another thing that will definitely enhance the look as you can see over here is actually selecting your camera and under the camera properties, checking depth of field. Once you do this, you can reduce the f-stop to increase the amount of depth of field. And instead of using a focus distance, I chose focus on object and I just added in an empty. So then I placed the empty at the exact location of the central molecule that I have. And by doing so, the camera became focused on that particular object and everything else starts to blur out, which adds quite a bit to the effect. And with that, we'll smoothly transition back into the original video. Once you do that, you should get an animation like this. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. And I really hope you learned something useful from it. If you liked it, there are hundreds of videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and watching other videos that you haven't watched already will definitely help me out and hopefully help you out as well. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, you can keep creating. And while doing so, make sure that you stay creative.